Yulia Tymoshenko is one of the big three political leaders of Ukraine. Together with Viktor Yushchenko and Viktor Yanukovych, she led the Orange Revolution back in 2004. But what happened after the revolution is that the three politicians started turning against each other. That's usually what happens when a political coalition completes its objective. Yushchenko founded the Our Ukraine Party, Yanukovych became the leader of Party of Regions, and Tymoshenko led the Fatherland Party. This division is basically what ruined Ukraine in the last decade. The Europeans and Russians played the political landscape of Ukraine, trying to turn the situation in their favor. But in the meantime, corruption flourished, social institutions were neglected, unemployment rose, poverty rose, the country sank into depths and had to make controversial political compromises. When Yanukovych came to power in 2010, he led the charge against Tymoshenko for abuse of power. The accusation was that her energy negotiations with Russia were based on her personal interests. And there is certainly some truth to that story. I personally think that both Yanukovych and Tymoshenko have huge corrupt dealings. But in essence, this was a politically motivated trial because Yanukovych nullified his political opponent. And what happened next is even more important. European leaders rallied behind Tymoshenko and condemned it as political persecution. And many of Europe's biggest media enterprises depicted Tymoshenko as a pro-Western hero, when in fact she was never pro-West. For that matter, she wasn't pro-Russian either. But there is a gap between the reality and her iconic portrayal in the media. My name is Shivan and this is Caspian Report for Made on TV. Visit the website and Facebook pages for more information. Now, as I explained earlier, Tymoshenko is one of the three political leaders of the Orange Revolution, so she still has close connections with most of the opposition parties. And even though not everyone welcomes her return to politics, the thing about Tymoshenko is she appeals to both Western and Eastern Ukrainians. And even though this is what Ukraine needs right now, somebody that unites both sides of the country, I have my doubts about her, and I'll explain why. Now, from European perspective, Tymoshenko would make a great prime minister. She is championed as a liberator in the media, but in reality, she has deep business links in Russia, and she also has a good personal relationship with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. This personal relationship is in fact one of the reasons she was charged with corruption in the energy negotiations in the 2010 trial. So seeing Tymoshenko back on stage would actually be a good thing for the Russians and the Europeans. I mean she appears pro-West but also has close ties to the Russians so she is in fact in the middle. And what does this all mean for the future of Ukraine? Well it means with Tymoshenko in power it's business as usual, so don't expect any shifts or transformations. Ukraine needs a new generation of politicians. And I believe the country can rebuild its economy and reform its society according to European standards. Kiev can in fact become a liberal democracy like its European neighbors and yet maintain close relations with the Russians. But right now, a lot of Ukrainian politicians are making empty promises. They're all trying to win over the hearts and minds of the hopeful Ukrainian people in order to stabilize the situation. And this goes especially for Tymoshenko. In her first public speech after being released from prison, she promised that Ukraine would become part of the European Union soon. But what exactly is soon? Romania has some of the lowest GDP per capita in the European Union, standing around 14,000. But Ukraine's GDP per capita is almost twice as low, at around 7,000. Do you honestly believe the European Union is willing to embrace such a poor country soon? The EU is still struggling with the financial crisis and you expect Ukraine to enter the Union soon? Well, this tells me she flat out lied to all those people out there. And it's also the reason why so many people distrust her. She is part of the old guard. And perhaps part of the problem. But then again, this is post-Soviet politics. And in this game, integrity, innocence and truth are extreme rare characteristics. 
Anyways, this was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan, doing a report for Made on TV. Be sure to visit the provided website and Facebook pages for more information on Caspian Report and Made on TV. And as always, thanks for watching and sarou.